We know you can do it, Dennis. I'm sure glad you think so, Mr. Mayor. Now, let's run through what you're supposed to do in Washington just once more. All right. I'm going to talk to our senator. Senator Philbin. That's right. And tell him all those woods and lakes and streams around Hickory Mountain would make a swell national forest where men like Dad can take fellows like me on camping trips. Good, good. That's why we picked a boy your age to do the job. To show them how much we need a spot where our children can get away from the city streets and be close to nature. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Yes, sir. I was just going over some last-minute instructions with our young Goodwill ambassador here. Dennis will do his very best, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate the confidence you have in him. Oh, I'm sure he'll dramatize our point much better than any adult could. Oh, and Alice and I can't thank you and the committee enough for paying our way, too. Well, the boy needs his parents to watch over him. Boy, me and Mom and Dad and Mr. Wilson are going to have a swell time. Mr. Wilson? Oh, our neighbor, John Wilson. He writes for a national magazine. <laughs> Sold his editor on the idea of coming along to write an article on what Dennis does in Washington. Well, splendid. <laughs> oh, dear, it still won't close. Oh, I'll help you, honey. Please feel free to call on me from Washington if you need any help or advice. As mayor of this community, I do carry some weight, and it might come in handy there. Your weight might come in handy right here, Mr. Mayor. If you could just sit on that suitcase, Mom can't get closed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Winfield, just what you ordered. An article on how one small boy with a just cause can influence the course of Congress. The voice of a child heard on Capitol Hill. That should justify the payment of my expenses, eh, Mr. Winfield? <laughs> right. Goodbye. That takes care of my editor. Well, did I forget anything? No, dear, I'm proud of you. You even remembered your socks. Ah, I wish you were going with me, Eloise, but they only offered to pay my expenses. Don't you worry about me. You just get a good story. If I wasn't going, there wouldn't be a story. I'm the one who put our National Forest Bill across. Not Dennis? Well, frankly, his appointment with our senator has only sentimental value. But I know I can depend on my influential friends, such as... Uh, Senator Buford, Judge Kingston. Dennis may get the glory, but I'll be the power behind him. You know, dear, it's too bad we don't have time to buy you a size 48 suit. I wear a 44, you know that. Yes, I know, dear, but you're a much bigger man in Washington than you are here. <laughs> Mr. John Wilson. Mr. and Mrs. Henry Mitchell and Dennis Mitchell. That's me. I'm going to Washington. <laughs> yes, he's uh, very kindly taking us along. Yes, your reservations are confirmed on flight 60 nonstop. You mean we won't stop? Not until we get there, Dennis. Jeepers, that's a long way. Suppose I want to go There's one on the plane, dear. <laughs> a mailbox? What? I might want to write a postcard to Tommy. So if there's one on the plane... You'd better wait until we get there, Dennis. <laughs> hey, Dad, what are you doing with our suitcases? Oh, this is where they weigh them in, collect them all together, and put them on the plane. I better go along with that one and make sure it gets on the plane. All my school books are in there. Well, that's wonderful, Dennis. You're going to study on the trip, are you? No, sir. I'm taking my books to stand on. When I talk to Senator Philbin, I want to look him right in the eye. <laughs> It's official, son. You're up in the air. Way up in the air. Good afternoon. 
afternoon and welcome to Flight 60. This is your pilot, Captain Howard Lynch. Hi, Captain. This is your passenger, Dennis Mitchell. <laughs> Dennis, uh, he can't hear you. We are now cruising at an average speed of 620 miles per hour and should arrive at our destination in approximately two hours and 40 minutes. Boy, I sure hope he gets us to the right place all right. Of course he will. Why shouldn't he? If he can't hear, maybe he can't see so good either. <laughs> Look out your window, Dennis. We're flying over Hickory Mountain now. Oh, gee, that's pretty. I sure hope we get him to make a national forest out of it. Have no fear, my boy. We will. I have some important contacts in Washington who will pave the way for us. I have an important contact in Washington, too. Indeed? Yes, sir. He was my counselor at summer camp last year. And his name is Freddie Thorpe. He runs errands at the Capitol. Oh, a page boy. I guess that's what you call him. Anyhow, Freddie's real smart. Well, if all else fails, we will use your important contact. But I'll talk to the senator myself first. Everybody comfortable here? Yeah, we're fine. I heard you say you were going to see a senator. That's right. I'm going to get him to fix up a national forest for us. Really? Yes, this young man has been appointed to make an appeal for one. And when we get our national forest, Dad's promised to take me camping out there. Just the two of us. Why, that's wonderful. Would you like to go with us? <laughs> Thanks, but I'm afraid I can't make it. I guess three in a tent would be a crowd anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid it would be. I'm Henry Mitchell. This is Mr. John Wilson. We've reserved two rooms. Yes, we have them, Mr. Mitchell. A room for yourself and your wife, an extra cot for your son, and an adjoining room for Mr. Wilson. Uh, boy, 806 and 808. John? Yep. Hey, Mr. Wilson. We're the ones that are here on business. Shouldn't we room together? Uh, I requested a room with a single bed. <laughs> could you move my cot in beside his bed? Yes, we could do that. Yeah, per perhaps your parents won't approve. How about it, Dad? It'll just be next door. Well, if Mr. Wilson doesn't mind. Isn't that great, Mr. Wilson? We're roommates. Splendid. Now, if we want to discuss business, we won't have to wait till morning. We can talk all night. <laughs> but this is a very important matter. Well, if you just let me speak to Senator Philbin in person, I'm sure that... I know he's a busy man, but... All right. I'll be there tomorrow morning. Goodbye. The Senator can't see us today, huh, Mr. Wilson? So his secretary informs me. Well, tomorrow will be all right. A delay, delay, delay. It seems to be the watchword here in Washington. The way politicians put things off, it's a wonder we're not still a British colony. <laughs> well, it's only a day, Mr. Wilson. When you and Dennis get in to see the senator, I'm sure it won't take you long to persuade him. Sure. When he hears about all those important connections you've got, he'll be sorry he didn't see us sooner. Well, I suppose you're right. It's his loss, not mine. <laughs> well, that means we have the whole day to ourselves. Oh, boy, let's go sightseeing. If, well, I think I'll take this time to rough out the opening of my magazine article. Uh, you do the town without me. You've got to come with us, Mr. Wilson. But I've seen it before, Dennis. That's why we need you, so you can show us around. <laughs> Mr. Wilson really knows Washington. He can answer questions about it practically in his sleep. Yes, I proved that all last night. <laughs> Can't the article wait, Mr. Wilson? All right, all right, I'll be your guide. You know, it's too bad the famous Washington cherry trees aren't still in bloom. They still got cherry trees? I thought George Washington cut them all down when he was a boy. <laughs>
Mr. Jefferson surely was a great man, wasn't he? He had a good deal to do with making this a free country back in 1776. He'll always be remembered as the writer of the Declaration of Independence. We learned that in school. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You certainly learned that well, Dennis. Some things go right through your head, but that's the kind of thing that sticks. As long as it does, son, this country will never have to worry. George Washington's monument. Oh. You should have walked down like me and Mr. Wilson did. Oh, the elevator was good enough for us, dear. <laughs> but you missed the big memorial stones that all the states and foreign countries put there. That may be, but we sure saved our legs. Where is Mr. Wilson? Oh, he kind of slowed down and got behind me. Here he comes. John, are you okay? Well, of course I am. I pride myself on keeping in good shape. Mr. Wilson, mm -hmm. you told me there were 898 steps in the monument. That is correct. Well, I only counted 895. <laughs> Nevertheless, there are 898. Well, I'm going to write to Tommy about it, and I want to be sure. Let's walk up and count them again. On second thought, I'm mistaken. Your count is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lincoln's got a nice face, hasn't he? He was that kind of man, dear. He held this nation together during the grimmest chapter in our history. It caused him great suffering and pain, but he never lost the quality of kindness. Could I climb up there in his lap, Dad? Not loud, son. I'll bet he wouldn't mind. So beautiful and dignified. Yes, a fitting residence for our most important citizens. Yeah, nothing's too good for Carolyn. <laughs> Yes, Dennis, isn't it beautiful? Our nation's capital, where a hundred senators and over 400 representatives make our laws. They all make the laws? That's right. Jeepers, Dad, maybe you better not go in there. Why not? Well, I heard you say if you ever met the fellow who made the income tax law, you'd punch him right in the nose. <laughs> 500 of them would take all day. Well, son, I'll try and restrain myself. <laughs> Oh, this has been a fascinating afternoon. Oh, my feet are killing me. <laughs> Mine too. But we've seen a lot of exciting things today. You'll have a lot to talk about when you get back to school, Dennis. I sure will. And I bet you're going to write a swell article about it too. Because when I see Senator Philbin tomorrow, and... Freddie! Hey, Freddie! Mom, Dad, it's Freddie Thorpe. You know, my friend who's a page boy. Well, hi, Dennis. Gee, what are you doing in Washington? I'm here on business, Freddie, for the mayor. He sent me to... Oh, Freddie, I want you to meet my mom, dad, and my friend, hi, Mr. Wilson. There. Freddie's my Washington contact. <laughs> Why, we've been hearing a lot about you, Freddie. Ever since last summer. Oh, we had a lot of fun at camp. Dennis is one of my best men. I'll tell you what, Dennis. Why don't you and I have lunch one day while you're here? Oh, boy, that'll be swell, Freddie. Oh, that's very nice of you. Hey, you'd better not make it tomorrow. No. Mr. Wilson and I have got a business deal tomorrow. Make it the next day, then, Wednesday. One o'clock? 
All right. I'll meet you right here, Freddy. Wednesday, 1 o'clock. Okay, well, it was nice meeting you folks. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Goodbye, Freddy. Bye-bye. Dennis, the people in your town chose wisely in sending you on this mission. I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Senator Philbin. The mayor the said... The creation of a national forest. Always a splendid idea, and I'll certainly give it some thought. I knew you'd do it, Senator. How soon can us kids start camping out there? Well, these things take a little time, Dennis, but you just go on back home, tell them Senator Philbin said you did a very fine job here. Hmm? <clears throat> well, just how do you go about a thing like this, Senator? I'm curious. Well, any bill having to do with national forests, Mr. Wilson, has to go through Senator McDermott of the Interior Committee. Uh, McDermott? Yes, a very powerful committee, and I will mention it to McDermott. Don't worry. First chance I get. Uh, today, perhaps? Uh, tomorrow? Well, I will be out of town tomorrow. It may be a couple of weeks, but you will be hearing from me as soon as I have any news. Good day. <laughs> How do you like that? Brushed off like a piece of lint. Gee, it sure looks like it's going to take a long time to get our national for us, doesn't it? If we leave it up to that big windbag, we'll never get it. What are we going to do? All the kids are depending on me, and the mayor, too. We are going to get some action. That's what we're going to do. Now is the time to use some of the important contacts I have here. It's lucky you know all those big people. Who are you going to talk to? A very dear friend of mine, Dennis, and one of the most influential men on Capitol Hill, Senator Humphrey L. Buford, chairman of the Monetary Disbursement Committee. Boy, he sure sounds important. He'll get our bill through McDermott's office just like that. Now, I'm going to put you in a taxi cab, send you back to the hotel, and I am off to see Senator Buford. Yes, sir? Oh, um, John Wilson? To see Senator Buford. Uh, Senator who, Ferd? <laughs> Buford. You do know the name of the chairman of the committee that employs you. Oh, sure, but it's not old Humpy Buford, mister. No. A funny thing happened to him on the way to the polls. <laughs> he was defeated? Seven years ago. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Oh, this is very distressing. I need help badly on some legislature that I'm trying... Do you know Judge Kingston? Is he still around? Oh, sure. He's a very big man. You know him? Uh, do I know him? Why, Harvey Kingston and I fought all through the war together, side by side. Really? Oh, yes. Yes, we had adjoining desks at the Pentagon. <laughs> oh, good old Harv. <laughs> you flip when I walk in on him. <laughs> Uh, what's his name, Mabel? John Wilson? <laughs> Says he's an old friend of mine? Oh, all right, send him in. Harvey! <laughs> By George, it's good to see you. Uh, how, how are you, Wilson? Fine, just fine. Say, you look wonderful. You haven't changed a bit. Well, it, it's been a long time. 1944. <laughs> I bet the old Pentagon hasn't been the same since we left. <laughs> Probably not. Well, it's nice to see an old buddy again. Uh, uh, what can I do for you, Don? <laughs> John. <laughs> okay, John, of course. Well, I just came by to kind of uh, kick around old times, sort of reminisce. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, there is one small favor I need, and I know you can do it for me just like that. And my good friend, Judge Kingston, said your department would handle the matter for me. Judge Kingston is a nut. <laughs> what? We got nothing to do with getting a bill like that passed. What you got to do is go down to the public lands office. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> no, the place to go with that is the Fish and Game Commission. <laughs> No, the place to go with that is the Bureau of Conservation. No, the place...
place to go with that is the Monetary Disbursement Committee. But that's where I started. <laughs> oh, I give up. Well, I'm not sure whether our bill will be passed or not, but I have a great new angle for the story. A small boy's impressions of Washington. It... You don't want a small boy's impression of Washington. <laughs> Well, I, I know I promised you a story on how a child could influence Congress, but you see, I... You... What? Pay my own expenses? <laughs> Mr. Winfield, do you realize how much it costs to... Goodbye. That sounds like trouble, Mr. Wilson. What's the matter? Everything's the matter. If that National Forest Bill doesn't go through, the magazine won't buy my story. Not only that, I'll be stuck with all my expenses, including that 80-cent piece of cake you're eating. Well, I'm not worried, Mr. Wilson. Not with all those important contacts you've got in the government. <laughs> and I'm happy to say that at last I've got some action. Where's Dennis? Oh, I just dropped him over at the Capitol, John. He's having lunch with Freddie Thorpe today. Oh, yes, yes, I, I forgot. Well, I got so sick and tired of the pushing around I got yesterday that I went over to Senator McDermott's office and I camped there until his secretary gave me an appointment. Oh, good. Two o'clock today. From two o'clock until 2.15, Senator McDermott is all mine. Oh, I wish Dennis could go with you, John, but I don't think he'll be back here by two. No, Freddie has an uncle here in town and he's taking them both out someplace. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll be disappointed. But I'll see that he gets full credit for it back home. Oh, that's very kind of you, isn't it, Henry? Yes, it is, John. Yes, he'll have his picture in the paper as the boy who delivered on National Forest. And now I want to take you both to lunch to celebrate. And then you can go with me to Senator McDermott's office. Oh. Come along. <laughs> Miss, please cut in on him. My appointment was 2 o'clock and it's long. I'm sorry, sir but I cannot break in on the meeting. Excuse me, please. John, we can wait just as long as... That. Well, I am not waiting any longer. I don't believe he's having a meeting. I think he's taking a nap or something. John? <laughs> Senator, I, I... Oh, good heavens. <laughs> this? Do you have an appointment? Hi, Ma. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mr. Wilson. Boy, we had the swellest lunch ever. And you know what Uncle Charlie's gonna do? Uncle Charlie? <laughs> Senator McDermott is my uncle. Sheepers, I almost forgot my manners. Come on, Mom. Senator McDermott, I want you to meet my mom, Senator. Dad, and Mr. Wilson. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? Uh -huh. He wants me to call him <laughs> Uncle Charlie. And guess what? I told Uncle Charlie all about Hickory Mountain, and he's gonna do it. You mean the senator of uh, the uh, National Forest? This boy of yours would make a fine ambassador, Mrs. Mitchell. He's charmed me completely. Well, I... Uh, we... I thoroughly agree. Your state needs a recreational area, and the Hickory Mountain section is the one. I'm putting a bill into my committee tomorrow. Oh, uh, I believe you wanted to see me about something, Mr. Wilson. What can I do for you? Uh, uh, not a thing, Senator. Not a thing. I'm just uh, visiting here. Uh, just a, a sightseer, that's all. Boy, it sure is a good thing you met Mr. Wilson, Uncle Charlie. Oh? Yeah, because he's got a lot of swell contacts here in Washington. And if you ever need any help with anything, he'll handle it for you. <laughs> Won't you, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> Gems, film production.